Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review the Netflix original, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Face of Madness returns. Directed by David Blue Garcia, Bubba's back, baby. And he's probably coming for people exactly like us. Try anything you cancel, bro. Because a bunch of influencers are trying to buy an entire town, the ghost town of Harlow. And he is just out to kill all of them. We were thinking about this and I think we're gonna do like full spoilers on this one. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's a really fun time, despite what Twitter has to say. This is really divisive. I'm not saying that everybody else's opinions are wrong, but I kinda am. No, but for real, you're either really gonna love it or you're really gonna hate it. So I think make up your mind for yourself, then come back and just hear us talk shit about it. Or praise it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both things will happen. <laughs> so what do we like? I like the fact that we have another Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I know that we haven't really reviewed any other ones on this channel ever before, <laughs> other than Leatherface. It is what it is. But I just like Leatherface. I think he's a really cool character, family or otherwise. And I just like this big beefy guy with a chainsaw killing people and a hammer. Come on. I'm going into this movie wanting to see awesome deaths. We got exactly what we wanted. So I think the two sides of the coin here, I think there's some people that really want the cannibalistic family involved, and then there's other people that just don't like the fact that cancel culture is mentioned and stuff <laughs> like that, which I thought was absolutely hysterical and made for one of the best scenes in the film personally. But like, it's a really basic dumb story check your brain at the door. They're all throwaway characters. You don't really have to care about any of them. You basically don't even learn their names until they're about to die. Other than Dante, we didn't know a single character. Well, Sally, but at the same time, going back to this discussion of like where people are divided, as much as I know how important the Sawyer family is. Saw is family, John. It's 50 years later. Would you prefer to see like frail, somehow living 100 to 200 year old family members? If it's like 10 years later, 20 years later, okay. Yeah, it's different. It's 50, acceptable. 50 years is a long time. Like even Leatherface is up there in age. Like he's gotta be like pushing 80. Yeah, in this movie, which is, <laughs> Kind of bananas, I'm like, whatever. I don't really care. He did the work. I mentioned it in our commentary because we did do a full commentary. Link is in the description. Check out the Patreon, support us. But I did mention it there that you go on Instagram and you like one like Champa photo. He's like a beefy <laughs> grandpa. And then all of a sudden your whole search feed it's like, oh, because you like this photo, you're gonna love this other hunky ass grandfather we've got. Well, I'm sure that that's what's happening here. 80 year old or whatever, 75 to 80 year old. Is he still junior? <laughs> Maybe he's called senior. It didn't really take me out of it because I don't need to really care that much. And so this is a direct sequel to the first film. And yeah, I don't think the family needs to exist. They kind of explained it away with the orphanage and he just lived there for the rest of his life. Well, I'm very happy that they didn't go the supernatural route and it explained like, oh, they could all stay alive because they were cannibals and like eating human flesh gave them the, the secret of youth. I don't know if I would have hated it. I'm telling you, this whole franchise is, is a disaster. Disaster. I know I'm stoking fires here. Like if you look at the timeline of this, it's more fucked up than Halloween. They restarted stuff that did a prequel to the restart that didn't associate itself with the original. And this is a sequel to the original. Evil succeeds tonight. <laughs> it still did a good job capturing Leatherface for who Leatherface was. I liked the kind of callback shots they did with him running with the chainsaw, putting on the makeup. Like Leatherface looked great. <laughs> Despite what the Netflix thumbnail showcases, I was very impressed. The promo shots look like Grumpy Cat half the time, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> like his stupid little face poking up in a cornfield. I'm Sun like, sunflowers. Yeah, I'm not sold on that <laughs> shit, dude. But actually seeing what it is and it's him wearing the orphanage's mom's face, like that's so cool. And like our throwaway cast is whatever. You don't really care. I mean, they tried to like inject a backstory into Lila's character, but like I didn't care about our main girl. I don't even know her name, Melody. Her name's Melody. I don't even know that they mentioned her name the whole movie. I feel like they did. You just didn't care for the characters. As far as likes are concerned, I think it's like, I like the idea that this was just such a dumb idea. We're idealistic individuals who want to build a better world. 
Yeah, that's a cult. Leatherface looks badass. He's massive. He's brutal as fuck. And just like the gore is just unreal. I absolutely love the gore. When you see that wrist crack and he stabs the guy with his own wrist bone, you're like, this is what I wanted. Or when you see him smash a man's leg in half. Oh. It was like the Sid Vicious yeah. thing, dude. And then like constantly like Triple H sludge hammer his head into the ground. And they didn't cut away from it. That's what's great about this is we got to see everything. We're seeing face rips, we're seeing smashes and you're feeling every single impact. This was a brutal movie. And we grazed over it, but it's important to mention the bus scene, you can't go wrong with that bus scene because that was top notch. Every time we see a bus filled with people, we're just like, we hope somebody walks in there with a chainsaw. Somebody finally did it. I mean, we did see it happen in like Bunny Man Massacre. We saw it way back in the day, but seeing it up close and personal, and he's just like chopping people up, throwing limbs back. The fact that you have the guy like, you're getting canceled, bro. And then when the phone <laughs> falls, it's like, oh, this shit looks fake. Yeah. <laughs> I was fucking dying. They made something that may not fit to the mold of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but they made a great slasher. And it's like modernized, right? Like you gotta understand, a lot of the people that are watching this movie are not the same people that grew up in the 70s and watched the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You'd be lucky if half the people checking this out even saw like Leatherface, let alone Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Do your thing, cuz. There's probably a generation of people who were just getting into this franchise. And some of you might be watching this video and that's absolutely okay. There's a lot of people that think that's not okay. It's like, oh, you're 20 years old? Well, you're not as good as me because I'm 45 years old <laughs> and I like my Texas Chainsaw <laughs> like the old days. I don't give a fuck. I mean, I'm almost 40, but I, I don't care. You, <laughs> you do you. What we like is really cool kills. Usually we do care about character development and stuff, but this movie had an intention. Like you weren't supposed to really care. You're just like going, they're gonna get killed. That's yeah. it. Cause they would have chosen better characters and better reasons for people to be in Arlo. I get the irony <laughs> of talking about influencers getting murdered. I was already called out on Twitter for it for some reason. <laughs> I was also a big fan of the cinematography of this film. I think they did a fantastic job. The way that things were framed really kept me engaged with what was happening, especially at the part where Melody is under the bed because we have this whole scene where we're using like reflection in the mirror and like the tension of the tight shots or even with the wider shots with like Leatherface and just like how he's dancing about. Cinematically, it is well done. It's a beautiful looking film. The whole sunflower scene, like when they're in the field there, it's just like- but Even with a <laughs> shot above the field when the car smashes into the red thing, the tractor or whatever, hell yeah. And I really like the last shot of the film. I thought it was hilarious is where he just like gets up and cuts that off, just holds it up. And stay for the stinger too, because like- Netflix is bringing it back. Yeah, you want your family? You're gonna get it in the sequel. Now, what didn't we like? I actually hated the entire Sally aspect of this story. Cause they're doing a whole Halloween thing here. They're trying to like recreate Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, and unfortunately, <laughs> Marilyn Burns is not with us anymore, who played Sally originally. And so it doesn't have that same nostalgic feel. So bringing that character back, like it feels feels awkward. I'm the one who got away and I'm here to make sure you don't. You've seen Lori Strode set up traps and wait for this day. And you're like, okay, let's go. You see Sally gutting a pig and barely able to shoot her weapon when she has the person that she's wanted to kill forever, who's killed all of her friends in her sights, point blank range with a shotgun and decides to not shoot him. And then she's also killed. Killing her is not the issue, but the way that like she was handled, I think was kind of shit. It just was poorly executed. It, they didn't make me pop. I wasn't like, oh yeah, they're radioing Sally. Here we go. I don't think that it matters as much. Laurie Strode <laughs> is such a different character than Sally. But like, yes, we could talk about how the characters sucked in this film. Like it's one of those things where we're gonna try and create a final girl and they do this with Lila, but they don't give a strong enough backstory. They're like, let's create sympathy for her, but not enough sympathy that I'm going to care about her. Like, right, like we don't know her <laughs> as a person. We just know like what she's been through. Ever shot one before? Been shot at. 
and everything that we've seen that she's done in Harlow doesn't like make me really care about her. She's being dragged along by her sister who has ambitions. She had a cigarette and her sister accused her of having sex. Yeah, the rest of the time she just kind of like sat on a bus. Yeah, but she was still the only person I was rooting for. So I guess the sympathy card worked for me. It worked for you. I was just like, <laughs> here I am sitting like, ooh, I can't wait for Leatherface to kill everybody. I literally didn't care about anybody. <laughs> and I don't think that you're supposed to. You care that they die. But that's okay. <laughs> Even though this is in the dislike section, it's okay to not like every character. I dislike how effortless it was for this man to cut through support beams and an entire floor and even a like sewage pipe in the house. How is it so easy to go through metal but takes so long to cut through a person? I mean, look at those floorboards. She fell right through, no problem. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Half, okay. of these, half of these places have their own like built-in indoor pools because the structure is so bad. But the pipe? The pipe's rusted. It's true. There's only three people in this fucking town. There's not a plumber. Yeah, there's, not, there's a mechanic and a woman who runs an orphanage. And one orphan. And one big baby orphan. Don't call him a baby orphan. <laughs> He's an 80-year-old man. He's like older than the... <laughs> The, the orphanage Wait. mother. So if we're talking discrepancies here, how was that woman, the one from the old photos, still alive if he's older than her? I think they're the same age. She was like a young 20 year old starting up big visions. I got my own orphanage now. This is before the internet. She, If she started up in this day, she would have had a bus full of influencers grilling up corn on the cob and taking in all of the serial killing babies. I don't know about that. Although, I have seen a recent show, Adults Adopting Adults. It's fucking weird. And nearly every episode ends with the male of the family fucking the new adult they brought in. I actually started having feelings for her. She was a very beautiful young lady. That's a thing? Yeah. It's basically a lot of people trying to get green cards and visas to come over. But you gotta <laughs> see some of these clips because these dudes, they are guilty as charged. If it was my poster, I'd want it to say, welcome to Ohio, where's my blowy, but. <laughs> oh God, between that and 90 Day Fiance, Jesus Christ. People are, are, are scrolling through Netflix and they're looking at the trending. In number three, you got Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Number one, Love is Blind 2. I still need to watch that though. <laughs> now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. For what it is, I thought this was a great movie. It's not the best and it's certainly not the worst in the Texas Chainsaw franchise. It is definitely different. We don't have the cannibal family and that's fine to me. I liked Leatherface. I thought he did a great job. He's badass, he's brutal. The kills are gory and over the top and awesome. And there's a lot of like just funny moments. The characters are throwaway, but I didn't really care anyway because I just wanted quick fun. And that's what we got here. So I'm gonna give this three and a half Texas Chainsaw Corkscrews out of five. I had to give this film a lot of credit. I thought that they did a great job with the material they had. The only thing I don't like is the Halloween 2018 aspect of it. That's like the worst part of this story, but Leatherface is great. The kills are fantastic and it's just enjoyable. It's not what you would expect from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it's not a bad thing. So with that being said, I can give this film four nesty splashes out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film. If you've seen it, if you have any, do want to check it out. It's on Netflix, but I highly recommend that you check out the Patreon for the commentary and watch along with us. You can hear our reactions in real time. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date with everything here on Bloodbath and beyond. <laughs>